Greet, greet. Good oh, God, evening. I have the straight unmuted. Oh, no. Uh-oh. I don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> How we doing, chat? I don't know. How's it going? Hello. Oh. Greet, greet. Greeting, everybody. <laughs> greet, greet. Yes. Greet, greet to Punch Hello, Punch. Oh, all the people. I got Punch Punch. Punch Punch. Punch Punch is a beast. Yeah, oh, yeah. I actually managed to catch a tactic stream this week. Hell yes! Tactic streams are great. They are. They're legitimately more great. People, more people should watch them. All of my streams are good. <laughs> I am on this, this channel twice a week, and I think that's excessive. <laughs> Although you were all three of me last week, because I passed out. Yes. Kel <laughs> Kels was at a gig and had an amazing time. And she... Uh, Look. I yeah. want it known that I was totally fine for eighty percent of the journey back, and I was like, "Yep, ready for Dragon Age Stream. I'm ready." And then I had like the tiny last little leg of my journey. I had to get a bus, and I walked out of the train station, and I saw my bus leave the bus stop. Oh. <laughs> and then I had to, I had to kill an hour in a coffee shop, and by the time I got on the bus and got home, I was like, "I'm not. I'm no longer with it." Who <laughs> Who could have foreseen this? I was look. If I had got the bus that I intended to get, I would have been absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's because I had to literally sit on my butt <laughs> for an hour. Fair enough. Got two Pokemon cards left to get. Oh, great! I haven't had Pokemon cards in literal months because we have to save money for the move, which could be happening imminently. We hope. Any day. This is the, this is the hope. If we had moving based issues today. We packed another two boxes. And then as Spook was taking one to the car, the bottom fell out of one. Yeah. Uh, it happens. Uh, nothing valuable. Nothing no, was it, nothing valuable was in there. I sit on my butt all day, you amateur. Yeah, so do I, but I can yeah. I can take naps when I do it here. <laughs> yeah, we know. <laughs> We all do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got me addicted to Pokemon again. Excellent. I mean, she got to Pokemon streams on Sundays. Ha! Wink. <laughs> Blue's in hard promo mode. <laughs> I have spent a lot of today in between packing boxes, because I said pack two boxes. I also have been going through clips of my own channel to try to make the goddamn trailer that I've been saying that I need to make. Yeah. It looks so really good so far, chat. Thank you. So yeah, I've been going through uh, clips because there's loads of funny clips, but the goal of the trailer is to give an overview of me and what I do. So like, you know, I'm not an odd world streamer, so I can't put ten odd world clips in there, even though they're <laughs> not with that attitude. <laughs> no, <laughs> I could make I, I could make a separate video that is just an odd world highlights because you guys went crazy on the highlights for odd world because it was amazing. oh, it was so funny. It was so funny. I've got to tell you, this was Husk. I figured it was Husk. 
It's in the name. Yay. I saw you, I saw you. It has been a but, while yeah. since you've been in the chat, so I hope you have been mm -hmm. okay. I've never seen you lurking, I feel. It's been a while since I've been in Clip Studio Paint. I've been doing a lot of 3D stuff. You have. You have been doing a lot of 3D modeling. But, um... Yeah, it also feels like forever since I've been on the stream because, as a, as we said, I was not here last week. I was saying goodbye to Panic at the Disco. Amazing. R.I.P. Not dead. It's <laughs> very much alive. Not, not dead, but thriving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Fair enough, Husk. Ah... Uh... That's, that's the pain in the ass. <laughs> What's Blue doing this week? I don't think Blue knows. I don't know, honestly. <laughs> I had no plans. Uh, I'm doing warm-up just to give my hand, you know, a, well, a warm-up, obviously. Because I sure as heck don't know what I'm going to be drawing. No. Maybe I will do, I... That, do that sprite. I don't know. I maybe have an idea of what I'm working on this stream. Um... Because the um, the escape rule prompt <laughs> list went up. You two share oh, a brain cell God. again. It's the cluster. Either, either that or I actually finish the drawings that are on the schedule, which I probably should do. When have you ever done that? What, finished a thing? Um, I don't know. No. Yeah. Can't relate. Like, no. Um, <laughs> just draw weird stuff. Blue always draws weird stuff. I always draw weird MO. stuff. Have you ever been to my art streams? <laughs> Welcome, you must be new here. Um, but yes, I am I'm gonna do another poetry marathon today. Ooh. Uh for people who were not here when I did the last one, I did chat requests that time. But this time the escape rule prompt list um has gone up, which is a poetry challenge that happens in kind of the poet internet poet community. Um where uh, for every day of the month in April, you write a poem. I've successfully done it one time. I've unsuccessfully done it four times. Um, Don't look at me in October. <laughs> yeah, for real. I've never um, succeeded in October. And I, and I only succeeded at it once because I was literally bedridden for the entire month and had no alternative. <laughs> um, and it was still hard. And it was still hard to remember to do it. Um, but I was like, well... I wrote like 18 poems in the last poetry marathon, so I'm just going to use the prompt list as motivation on these streams for a little bit while I have no thoughts in Hi. my brain. Also, I've been working on a poem. I've been trying to um, finish a poem every month-ish, or at least like take an old poem I like and be like, yep. That's for sure done. I'm not going to fiddle with that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, just like casually, not like a proper resolution or anything, just something I've ended up doing. Um, and uh, this one that I'm working on at the moment is driving me fucking insane. And I, if I read it one more time, <laughs> <laughs> every time I read it, I'm like, I need like another four lines just for pacing. Uh, this is gonna be so. I like. I deliberately started it to be a shorter poem, and it's gonna be one of the longest I've written in ages. That's always <laughs> how it goes, isn't it? Because that's how it goes. I love writing poetry, so do I. Yay. Big, big fan of poetry. I probably write more poetry more than I do anything else, um, because it's easier. <laughs> it's easier and harder. Um, but I enjoy it. I enjoy it a great deal. Um, yeah, if anyone else wants to look at the Escape Pro prompt list, just look up Escape Pro on Instagram. It's run by Savannah Brown, who's a, a very talented poet. Mm -hmm. um, Did you see the poem that I sent you? Yes, I liked that one a lot. It's about getting your hair cut. It is. And also the end of summer. <laughs> it's very good. I don't know what music to listen to. I've been in a weird between music. Mm. I'm just in the I'm listening to the same six songs on repeat at the moment. Oh yeah, but you're streaming, so... Oh no, 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 no you no, mean off stream. Outside of streaming, I'm listening to the same six songs on repeat. 
Hello. Is it Tom Carney? <laughs> no, actually. What did you put in the blend playlist this week? <laughs> you should have a look. Actually, it, if 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 there's, if there's a song, hang on, let me look up the artist. I know the name of the song, but I can't remember the artist. If there's a song called "Evil" by uh, Aviva, no, not the insurance company, but apparently that's what they're called. <laughs> if, if there's a song called <laughs> "Evil" by Aviva, you need to listen there to it. There is not, but I will listen. It to got it. added to Tala's playlist. Wonderful. So there's that. It is. It is. It is, it is for you. <laughs> it's, Thank you. Is for you. <laughs> I'm just gonna put on one of my daily mixes, I think, and hope for the best. Okay. Uh, let's see. Open. Yeah, oh God, now, I gotta, now I gotta find it. What are you looking for? There we go, the schedule. Oh. <laughs> Ta-da! I'm not plugging myself, maybe. Yeah, just before um <laughs> just before stream today, chat, me and Blue had a wild time. Rex the wagon! Hi buddy! Thanks for following! <laughs> I was talking to you in VR the other day. Hello, welcome. Hi, hi. Yeah, um, I was watching um, the most recent episode of Drawfee, and Karina draws something in Card Captor Sakura style. Oh, yes. And it yeeted me back in time because when I was younger, I had the first Card Captor Sakura movie on VHS, and it like just like unlocked this chamber of my memory that's like very. Like a lot of just like images in that movie, mm-hmm. like stills, are like very embedded in my brain. And I showed them to Blue <laughs> before this because she's never seen it. No, uh, uh, it's watch, very the, watch the anime, but not the movie. Yeah, but I've, I've watched, watched the movie, the but, not the but not the anime. Very weird. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I showed Blue, and it's like it's you can see how it's like spread out into my work it's really bizarre yeah it's 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 it was it was like how when we were playing through toon struck me and spook it was just like ah we're learning a lot about where all of these things come from <laughs> thank you for the sub thank you thank you thank you <laughs> I feel like my notification sound was very quiet there <laughs> I was about to say I couldn't hear it. Of course I could. Why would I hear it? <laughs> there we go. Let's get the lines going. I need to get words out of my brain. I, I kind of need to do a warm up myself, I think. <laughs> what was the last one I wrote? Did I finish it? Yes, I did, unfortunately. People in chat, throw me words. I need to write a warm-up poem that I care less about. <laughs> Leaves. Leaves? Mm-hmm. Okay. Need more. The visual. I need a theme. This is going to be a collaborative one. I've come up with one. Regret? Okay. I'm just going to write Leaves from the Vine from Avatar. Oh no! I'm not strong enough. Bacon? Poetry can't capture bacon. It's not strong enough. Nimble. Great. Coco. I write a rant poem for Coco. <laughs> Aww. Good baby. Waltz. Waltz is a nice word. So I've got leaf regret, waltz. Getting a, a seasonal theme. I'm okay with that. Yeah, sure, I can probably make something out of that. I just need to not be precious. Just put fucking words down. It doesn't matter. Oh, you wanted sensible words? I didn't say that. Nope. Don't put words in my mouth. We don't do sensible here. <laughs> Oh, 
Uh, oh god, I really did need a warm up. What the fuck am I talking about? It feels like a hundred years since I was last on this stream. Yeah, it kind of does, actually. Every time I'm gone for a week, I'm like... Because the last time I was on this stream, I was going off about immortality, right? I think you were, yes. That feels like 50 years ago. <laughs> I was in my post-immortality hyperfixation slump. Many the thing things is, have changed every, since every then. time you miss a week, it's not, <coughs> you don't miss a week, you can't, you, you, it's two weeks, technically. Yeah, technically, So, yeah. so it, it does feel longer. Um, what's happened since I was last here? <laughs> critical Role happened. I'm going to try oh, yeah. so hard not to talk about what's on going on. Critical Role. So, I'm up to date on Critical Role. I was Wild. I was kind of chipping I was kind of chipping away at I was kind of chipping away at it for a while now. Um but I caught up um this week and what a week to catch up it was. <laughs> I need therapy oh, because no. of last week's Greg The amount of times on Twitter that I saw the screenshot from Talks Machina of uh hey Matt, Ma the hey Matt what the fuck. Yeah, yeah, the amount of times I saw that picture. No I context. would like to publicly shout out to Das, who allowed me for I think actually two and a half hours to fully explain the plot of Critical Role Campaign 3. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> because I had no one to talk to. None of us can keep up with it anymore. None of us, none we of you guys are up to date, which is fine. These days. So and I just caught Das out, up. We all had time to watch it, but now none of us have time to watch it. Uh, so I just caught Das up verbally. So Das knows why I'm losing my mind, but no one else does. Fair. Um, but yeah, shit's wild. It's wild. <laughs> shit's wild, man. Well, because of wilds, I, I I actually listened to the first episode of um, uh, Worlds Beyond Number, right? Worlds, Worlds Beyond Number, that which was, I have not done. Oh my god, it was good. I literally, I was like, because the, the it's this the first one is kind of like the session zero of introducing the char the characters as mm -hmm. kids, but it's not the the kids story. Because the kids, the kids' story, they have like an, it's so so the, the children's campaign. The children's campaign is like a Patreon exclusive thing, but they yeah, have got I a was... session zero before that of like the three kids individually, and then the kids' campaign right. is like how they all meet and become friends. They have a little adventure, and then it's and then it's the actual campaign when they're adults. I haven't listened to the next the, that episode was technically episode one. Because right. I listened to Session Zero and I was like, I need to listen to that kid's campaign. Yeah, this is what I, I was like. I feel like I'm just going to grab the Patreon for like a month and binge the entire children's campaign. I bet a lot of people will. Yeah. Because, oh my goodness. And it was, God, it was an emotional roller coaster. And I couldn't agree with Lou more because it was like, we do we did a Bria's character and it was just like, oh, what the fuck? That was literally, I tweeted out, I'm going to listen to Worlds Beyond Number. And then like an hour later, I went, bruh, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. And then we and then we did Erica's character and it was a complete 180. You're going mm -hmm. to love, love that segment because I fucking loved it. I mean, you'll love all of it, but that segment is like targeted. It is targeted. Yeah. And then Lou's character as well. Um, yeah. Which is, I love them all. I love them all. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm, it's it's so. I'm good. definitely gonna to watch it. It's just when. Yeah, you have to listen to it, guys. Listen to Wells Beyond Number. It's a D and D campaign. It's a podcast, so there's no video. There's no visuals with it, so you can watch it while you you can listen to it while you do other stuff. If you're that kind of person, it's on Spotify. Session Zero is on, on Spotify. Yeah, it's on it's on every podcasting platform in the world. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I lost my mind because I may not have time to sit. It's sit down and I mean you don't even role. need to like advertise it because you can just list the cast <laughs> Brendan Mulligan Abria Iyengar Erica Ishii Lou Wilson it's it's, it's so it's so it's, good it's an all star the, the it's thing, literally the, the coolest the thing that, of all star the thing that cast didn't come across to me in any of like the promotional stuff because I've listened to D&D &D podcasts before I listened to the Adventure Zone and stuff like that 
this is some much like with Dimension Twenty. This is some next level production. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's there's, the way they do things. Yeah, it's yeah. not even that there's music. There is music, but there's actual like audio soundscapes that they put on it. Yeah. So when so when Brendan Brennan starts to describe describe something the audio for it gets put over the background. So he gets described something on fire and fire crackling comes in. And then he describes like the sound of hooves and the sound of hooves will start clopping in and it will go in the background while he's Full describing Momo, it. Brian, RPG. Yeah. yeah. And I was listening to it and I was just like, what the hell? Because as I said, I don't have a lot of time to sit and watch Critical Role, which is why I'm just so far behind. I haven't watched Campaign 2. Uh, but I can listen to podcasts because like while I'm packing boxes, while I'm cooking things like yeah. that I'm all, we're almost opposite in that yeah because <laughs> i don't listen to any podcasts yeah well, i listen to podcasts and i'm audiobooks. trying to go to sleep yeah i listen to podcasts and audiobooks and i like went through back when i had my Discworld rant i went through about three books in the space of a week um so yeah so I, i'm happy to have any kind of audio thing because i just like having noise yep so yeah, and I was just like, holy shit, I need to listen to that kid's campaign. I, I need it, but I cannot buy a Patreon right now. <laughs> yep. Such is the way. And also Never After's popped off, but like, I, I haven't caught up on that. I dropped off with Never After so that I could catch up on CR and now I've gone back with See, I was going to have me by the throat for a while. I've just got a feeling. <laughs> it's just a, an inkling. Oh my god, I've just realized you can see her in the background. Mm -hmm. If anyone knows what that that is... I can't see it very you well. You get a cookie. Oh, you can't see it very well. No, I could go get it. It's what my sister got me for my birthday, because my birthday's at the end of this month, but I'm not going to see my sister. Oh, right, I forget. I'm, I always forget, because I can see my my uh, video feed huge. But you guys are little. Yeah, we're in the corner. You, are you guys see me little? Hang on. I just dropped my pencil. Losing my religion. There we go. Boop. Boop. I just got booped. Peter took a dive, but that's okay. This little guy? Oh my god! Is that... Oh, the name... <laughs> it's gonna access some deep memories for some people here. Is it, is it, if they're of a it, certain age. Is it Maisie? Is that the nope. name? No, oh, what's the name? That was with an A. <laughs> Angelica, right? Angelina? <laughs> so, like Angelina. That. Angelina, that's the one. Angelina Ballerina. Oh my god. <laughs> so, for anyone who was... Who, some of you might be too young, which is wild <laughs> to me. Um, she is in a Sleeping Beauty outfit, so Neron does get half a point. Yay. Um, this is actually technically Alice. This is the, like, accomplice. Um... So Angelina Ballerina was a series of magazines in like the late 90s, early 2000s that were about a little mouse who did ballet. Her name is Angelina. She's a little white mouse. Um, and her friend Alice. This is Alice. Mm -hmm. um, and every week you would get like the base edition that had the like plushie. And then every week they would have little different outfits depending on what ballet they were putting on. This one's for Sleeping Beauty. Um... And it was a whole thing, <laughs> right? And me and my sister, when we were kids, were obsessed with it. And every time she came around my house or vice versa, she would have the Angelina one and I would have the Alice one. Aww. So for my birthday, apparently my sister was watching a like 2000s throwback video on YouTube or something or a TikTok or whatever. Mm -hmm. And she saw these and she was like, holy shit. Like, completely had forgotten about it. So she, on impulse, bought an Angelina and an Alice and two of their little outfits. Aww. Ironically, this is the outfit, my favourite outfit, because it reminded me of Barbie Rapunzel, because I was a tiny child. Um, but uh, 
she bought them and so she has Angelina again and I have Alice again. That's so, so cute. <laughs> but I just realised you could see her in the background, so... Yeah. It made me very emotional. <laughs> yeah. But like... Literally, it was in, like, the original packaging, so all the glue is, like, 20-year-old <laughs> glue. Oh, God, yeah. Well, it's not really glue anymore <laughs> at that point, is it? It's permanent adhesive. But it kind of works, because you can kind of stick the veil to it, so it kind of stands up. <laughs> but, yeah. My sister is great. <laughs> Public record, my sister is great. so cute. <laughs> Get up. But yeah, she hangs out with Peter now, which is a crochet bear that my sister also made me. <laughs> my sister is supplying 100% of the plushies to this house. <laughs> I can fix that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a threat. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, Jesus. Yeah, because I went, I went to panic with my sister, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting then, sad because I'm reducing the number of plushies in my house because every time <laughs> every time we pack a box, obviously it would make, it's a sensible thing to do. We, we use the plushies for like padding because we have so many of them. And yeah. the two bo the two boxes that I packed today was stuff that is heavy and it's like it's one of those it's it's like when it's like when you pack books, it's like you know, you've only you yeah. only need 20 books for it to become the heaviest box on the earth. So I open, I, you know, uh -huh. I, I tape together the box and I put like a layer of stuff in it, and it's and at that point it's like it's already getting too heavy to lift. So it's like, well, I have a, almost a full, you know, an entire box here that is empty. So it gets padded out with plushies. So uh, every every time we do a box, just more and more plushies are going and going and going, and now we're starting to get to the point where it's like there's actually empty spots in my room where my plushies go. Yeah, I and I hate having empty spots. Which is why I always have posters, you know, it's why I've got like my notice board and, you know, plushies, mm -hmm. plushies sit on shelves, they sit on chairs, you know, it's it's, pro it's proper magpie-like behavior, you know. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I've but we're, obviously we're, in your house. we're getting to that point <laughs> where the bookshelves are empty and... The place, That's weirder. Yeah, the bookshelves are empty, the, pla the places where the plushies sit are gradually starting to get empty and empty and I'm just like... Mm. How much dust is back there? Yeah, there was a lot of dust. <laughs> yeah, we're getting, we're getting to the, the point where I'm like, ah, I don't like being here. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Oh my god, and I haven't spoken to you. Sorry, this is a tangent change. I'm so sorry. Um, I met Vicky's cats. <gasps> you met, yes, how did it go with the cats? Because Vicky was like worried about... Vicky was so cats. worried about me meeting her cats, but it turns out that Vicky's cats are great. <laughs> So Vicky has two cats. They're called Marshmallow and Bonbon. Bon. They are like pure white cats. Bonbon, bon, I thought had like Scottish fold folded ears. No, Bonbon bon just doesn't have ears. Oh, um, so she just has little like open spots on her head. And she was like, just so you know, Marshmallow is extremely cuddly and full of love, and Bonbon bon is kind of an asshole but still full of love. Cats. So funny story. I got on way better with Bonbon bon than Marshmallow. It was because you were used to Sadie, who was also an asshole. <laughs> yeah, because, like, Marshmallow loved to be scooped, but mainly just wanted to sleep. Just wanted to be asleep and uh, to receive cuddles from my sister. Let me see. I know I have a picture of Marshmallow. Um, but Bonbon bon had this one place on top of, like, the, the top of the sofa... And she would go from there to the windowsill and back, and that's what she would do. Mm -hmm. And like every time I walked past, Bon Bon would just like look at me. I would give her some scratches, and she'd be like, "Yeah." And then we'd move on with our lives. Yep. And I loved that. Here is a picture of Bon Bon getting gently held. Oh. And not Bon Bon, sorry, Marshmallow is held. <laughs> Aww, sweet babies. But yes, they were very sweet. I was warned that Bonbon bon would wake me up, and I was like, I don't think that's going to happen. And they're like, no, Bonbon bon wakes us up every single day. Guess what it didn't do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everyone underestimates how hard I sleep. And also, I, I was so tired when I came back. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, bless. 
They were they were great. Thank you for desensitizing me to cats. Yeah. <laughs> they were very fun. You can now experience the joy of cats. <laughs> the joy of cat. It was also just fun to like get back to her flat at like after nearly getting locked out in the rain. <sighs> it's always me and Vicky. Um at like two o'clock in the morning. Is <laughs> it like the joy of painting? Yes. Um I'm like going into her house to just two extremely confused and disturbed cats who are like, why what time have you, you done call this? this? <laughs> yeah. You don't need parents when you've got cats to harangue you for coming in late. Yeah. Well, the thing is, like, Bonbon apparently gets them up at like three o'clock every morning. So, like, we got in just before Bonbon would have woken them up. So she was probably like, what? This isn't right. <laughs> Now I've thrown them off his rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> Fun times. Uh, everybody who's in the Discord will know um, Sadie had a little bit of a scare, but she is doing well. She's a lot more like her normal self today. She's eating, she's drinking, she's plowing. She, she's in a bad mood. <laughs> being a grump. She's very upset. She has new medication alongside her pre-existing medication. And it's a capsule, which is just, you know, the worst thing for her. So she, hard to feed cats. She was perfectly content when she had to have the syringe medication, but now that she has to have a pill, it's like, ah, uh, the worst thing ever, and she's probably uh, gonna just be on it for life now, so it's an another, yeah. bit, another bit of medication like the other stuff that she's on for life, so every day you gotta give her a pill, so she's just gonna <laughs> hate Sadie's me. doped up. She's just gonna hate me forever. She hates That's it, and fine. Spook is too much of a coward to give it to her himself. <laughs> Someone has to take the L. Okay, I hate this warm up, but that was the idea. Um, ba -ba -ba. Also, this weird, weird thing of having this awkward moment of the vet being like, if things go really bad, then she may have to have like medication that has to be injected. So if if it if it becomes like that, then we'll teach you how to do it. And that awkward moment of being like, I already know. To, yeah, we we do that. I, <laughs> we do I, that every day. Yeah, I already, I already know how to how to inject, and there, there's just a slight confusion, and then it's just the whole like I, I did what I did work experience out of that. It was it was one of the things that they oh they, right they, they yes. actually you know they showed me back because back in the day I wanted to be a vet, so I managed to win, I managed to win the lottery and get work experience out of, out of vets, um, which you know is. Everybody tries to. Everybody who wants to be a vet tries to get work experience. So they're they're always popular. Uh, yeah, and it was just one of the things that they taught me because it was a very specific scenario of like being someone who is a work experience. Obviously, not being a registered thing or anything. You know, le legally, I'm not allowed to do anything to anybody uh, anybody else's animals or anything. But it was yes. a very weird specific scenario of my pet had gone into the thing. So they were like, you know, they'd ask my parents to be like, if you're okay with it, you know, you're giving legal consent, you know, we'll give her a little bit more of a hands-on with only a very specific set of things. And literally all it was was they showed me how, how it was done. <laughs> yeah. Which was a very weird scenario, <laughs> and then I and then when it was the quiet period at the end of the day, where it was like doing loads of stuff, I got to look after my own cat in the kennel while she was getting get coming round. So she every ten minutes, and I'd be like mopping the floor, mopping the floor. Hi, Pippi, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you doing okay, Pippi? Yeah. Wild. 
literally a different life. Yeah, for real. <laughs> This first prompt on this list is actively hard because it is for like, like, I've written this poem like eight times. <laughs> I have a lot of poems about this topic. It's a whole chapter of my anthology. <laughs> what do I write that I haven't already written? I feel like I'm forgetting something that happened between now and the last time that I spoke to you, but I can't think about what it is. Uh, it's like driving me nuts. It's weird because like we we kind of half speak, which is like sending yeah, Discord messages. We message like, a lot. Yeah, we message a lot, but we don't actually speak speak, and I think both of us kind of mentally don't discuss a lot via a chat we would we would a lot, quite often you and me would rather talk about stuff via voice yeah so if we haven't had a voice call we've just like not talked about things <laughs> which means we've both forgotten about things yeah um because <laughs> i'm like what 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 could have happened um was it a gaming thing i don't know i don't know what i'm trying to remember i don't know uh, obviously you went to the gig um yeah panic we did the i think before before that we did the Pokemon raids, didn't we? Was oh that, yeah, was that, that, was that? that was fun. Yeah, that was before that. That was, that was a wild time. An in insight for some people into the the life of end game raiding that you and me have been doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, it was it was so weird because I did so the they're for Iron Leaves and Walking Wake. Yes. Um. And I did them the day before with Vicky and some of her friends who needed a fourth person for the race. Um, so <laughs> weird. That took us, we'd intended to do it over like an hour. It took us like four hours, not because of Walking Wake, but because of Iron Leaves. Yes. Um, and then it was so wild because it took us so long and so much trial and error and like, they were like not as far into the game as like us lot are. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of like, Oh, trade me this Pokemon and I'll get it to higher level. I'll give it a bunch of candy because um, a while ago, this is for chat, not for blue. Um, my, um, whenever I had like really bad insomnia, I would just do a bunch of random Pokemon Violet raids. So I had like a bunch of stuff um, to level up Pokemon and get them raid ready. But we also like didn't really know how to beat it, like. This was early enough that like the strat hadn't been like there was like a list of Pokemon that were like probably good picks. Yeah, it was people had made but there wasn't like because there's a, a strat. Yeah, there's entire communities now that like as soon as they announce what the next raid is going to be, they like go back and they dissect of like you know what's the possible moves it could learn, what nature might it have, what might it do with this, what might yeah. it do with this. So people try to anticipate. It's so funny when I see it in my YouTube feed of like a thing has been announced and then someone posts a video which is literally how to beat Walking Wake and I'm like, it's yeah. not out yet. You don't know it if this is going to work. You can't call well, this they... a how-to video. <laughs> well, it turned out the way to beat how Walking Wake was just to believe that you could. <laughs> the, the way a to light beat breeze. Iron, Wake is iron Hands and every, I think everybody knew that. Yeah. A walking Wake was not even slightly a challenge for Iron anyone. Iron Hands literally be like, haha, you fool, you come up to me as a water type, smash. But also like, Maridon. Maridon also type. But the, the two combined just, because Maridon activates Iron Hands. Yeah. So it was just like, it didn't even need thinking about really. Nah. I, you know, we just took in random Pokemon and I had my level 100 Maridon and it like wasn't, I could have beaten that yeah, by myself. level 100 Maridon and my level 100 Iron Hands. Yeah. But then Iron Leaves. Uh, I. So it took my OG team three hours to beat Iron Leaves. Because we just kept eating shit and dying. Yeah. And even when we worked out King Gambit, just like. King Gambit was one of the first things we thought of, <laughs> to be honest. It was like. It just. The type matchup makes sense. And then it was a lot of like finagling the move sets but like 
we didn't all have King Gambit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was like, okay, well, what do people take that isn't King Gambit? And like trying to find anything, truly anything, that wouldn't just get immediately shit upon. Like, it was one of those things of like, well, Skeledurge technically in like typing and everything should be fine, but it still eats shit and dies. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess I haven't told the funny story about how we eventually beat that <laughs> in this chat. You know it, yeah, but I know the chat it doesn't. you told me and, and, the, um, and the squad. So it was a, a squad of uh, my me, my sister, and then two of um, two people I knew from school like a million years ago. Um, and we've been throwing ourselves at this for hours. And uh, we were running. I was running King Gambit. There was another King Gambit and a uh, Gimmigool. And then we were cycling out the other one, right? Yeah. There was Vicky's. Um, so <laughs> we go into one of the raids and Vicky's switch crashes, fully crashes. And it has like 20 seconds on the timer. So Vicky reloads it, but she can't get back into the raid in time. And we're already locked in. So we just get like a random NPC. So we're like, oh, fuck, I guess it's just like a... You know, we're just throwing shit at the wall because it's not going to be anything. We get an uh, NPC with a Star Raptor. And we're like, I guess, okay. Um, so, <laughs> the Star Raptor, this is important, happens important to have the ability, <laughs> has the ability Intimidate, <laughs> which lowers the target's attack. Um, and... Vicky's getting back in the game. We're just like talking and bantering because we're we not we're taking the rum very seriously. Um, we're just kind of going through the motions, and I'm just sat there and we're watching the health go down, and it gets lower than we've had it so far. And there's a sort of like the three people in the raid just start getting very quiet because we're like, we beat this while Bruh. Vicky's not here <laughs> <laughs> with an NPC after doing it for three hours. This is gonna feel terrible to say, but <laughs> what happens is the health keeps going down, and the timer's not going down quick enough, and this giggle just starts. And Vicky's like, "What's happening? What's going on?" And we're like, "Nothing, nothing," because there's no way, right? And then we <laughs> we get through the terror barrier, and <laughs> we just all start laughing. And Vicky's like, "What?" And one of my friends was like, I think we're going to kill it. And Vicky's like, the hell you are. <laughs> the hell you are. We managed to kill it. And the moment that it died, we all just burst out laughing. Just like absolutely howling. Just... Because <laughs> it felt terrible. Yeah. But it was also really funny. <laughs> um... But then we were like, okay, that was funny, but now for realsies. And we wiped a few more times with Vicky on the team. Mm -hmm. And we were like, it can't be Intimidate. That can't be the difference. That that literally can't be the thing that makes the difference here. So for, as a thing, Vicky's like, well, I'm, I'm taking... She was taking an Arcanine in anyway. So she yeah. was like, well, let me just ability patch my Arcanine to have Intimidate and we'll just find out, right? So we take the Arcanine in, Intimidate, and we kill it that run. There we go. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> and Crazy. we were fuming. <laughs> so then when I show up the next day and I'm like, hey, y'all want to do the Iron <laughs> Leaves, the Wookie Wake Raids, I'm like, okay, who's taking the Intimidate? <laughs> Me. <laughs> Who is it? Which one and of yours this, is going to do? thus I coined the support salamance, which is still mm -hmm. a very funny statement to me. I told Vicky on the way to the gig that you had made a support salamance, and she found that exceedingly funny. I think it was very <laughs> funny as well. Support salamance that has, like, iron defense and... Um, iron defense. If you're looking to do that raid, you want iron defense. Need That's iron the defense. difference. Incre cause basi because basically... It has insultingly high attack Side stat. It has, yeah. insulting, it has an insultingly high attack stat. It buffs its attack stat with sword dance and it has side blade, which is a physical damage. It's just all attack. So it's you brutal. You have to immediately counteract that by raising your defense. Yeah. Which is all, I, by a lot. also why my Salamence knew Leah. Because I was, yes. I was again, support Salamence. I did iron defense to stop myself from dying. And then I was doing Leah to try to lower his, its defense to be just like, could you die? Could you die, please? Could you please die? <laughs> yes. 
And even then it was tight when we did it. It was tight, yeah. We got there in the end. But yeah, I think it's I think it's neat that they actually are making these raids and they are making people sweat. Oh yeah. I mean I remember the Cinderace one was the Cinderace nuts. Was rough. Yeah, the Charizard I'm still mad, I did okay. I... The Charizard I did okay <laughs> with, but the Cinderace was a step up. Yeah. I didn't do the Greninja, so I actually can't compare with how I thought Greninja would just start in. No, they were I mean they always go twice. Oh, is it Decidueye that are going again? Yeah, now? there's Decidueye at the moment. Oh yeah, yeah, Grin and I have Froakie. <laughs> And it's neat because they're obviously because of course they're giving them the types that is suitable. So you know it's like it's a Charizard, Fire Flying, and Dragon, and then yeah, uh, which is why Walking Wakes is so perplexing. Yeah, it was already Water type, and then they made it a Water Terror, and it's like thanks for the free win. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Why didn't you make it like it literally like its signature move is literally like Scalding Steam or something? Why didn't you make it like Fire? Like the whole thing that's like. The photo, he's got photosynthesis. Like that's a fun concept. It's for a, for a group of people that you've trained to be ready for <laughs> the absolute hell that was Charizard and Cinderace. It's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like it to it's like a standard player. That's pretty tricky. But man, oh my god, <laughs> I forgot. Literally yesterday, <laughs> I can't remember what raid it was mm -hmm. it was like it was something stupid i just went into a random raid and it was like porma or something like it was yeah. it was something like that um but, <laughs> um i can't remember what it i know I, I actually can't remember what pokemon it was but it was a everyone took electric types is what matters because it was vulnerable to electric right um just the tight matchup worked really well. So we all go into this raid, just random people with electric types, like high power electric types. And the fucking thing has, um, was it Volt Charge or whatever the fuck? Volt Absorb, no! Volt absorb. That was how I, that was how I choose the electric gym. I went to the electric gym with my killer watch roll, which is flying electric with Volt yeah. Absorb. So the AI was just like, bird, electric type moves, and I was like, nope. <laughs> it was literally so funny because, I again, there's no communication between me and the other players, but there's just this moment of, like, hesitation. Because normally when you're doing a raid, it's like, move, move, move. Like, you get some lag, but, like, people were just kind of clicking buttons and just cranking out moves, right? But there was just this, like, a beat where it just went a little longer than usual, so everyone's like, fuck, did I... Is there a non-electric move on this Pokemon? I was just because I brought my Rotom in. Yeah. I was like, I guess I have Hex. Yikes! <laughs> it was just like this moment of the first round. You just had this moment. Line. You, you fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a line of like the biggest electric type moves, like fucking uh, Maridon's Vault Charge or whatever the fuck it's Quad Charge or whatever. It's just Parabolic Charge. That's what it's called. Yeah. But it was just hilarious because it would just like one at a time just appear like Volt Absorb, Volt Absorb, Volt Absorb. And everyone went, whoops. <laughs> oh, oopsie. <laughs> Didn't even consider that was a possibility with this Pokemon. Why does it have access to that? It was like a, a dog shit Pokemon as well. It was like not a Pokemon you would think would have an ability that could. <laughs> I know a lot of people are hating the re current relic weapon steps. I thought the current relic weapon was just another 500 poetics. That's what I've done. Is there another tier up? You after? have no power here. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that every time as well. I, I love randoming into a ditto raid. It's so funny. <laughs> especially when you when you random into a like a six star ditto. And you just see everyone just select the most random Pokemon on Earth. Because it's like, well, I could type match up against the Terra type. Um, <laughs> like, but it's going to turn into one of us, so we're going to get our ass kicked no matter what. If people take in their Charizards, then we're fucked. People were expecting grind, but got no grind. I mean, it is a grind. You have to grind out like however many thousand poetics you need for 
each weapon. They, they say this now, but when they actually give us a grind next tier, they're going to be like... Yeah, it's like, people should not be complaining about a lack of grind in an MMO because the devs will take I, it personally. Yes, I... But the thing is as well, I was there for Shadowbringers. I've got a max level Shadowbringers record, Relic. And let <laughs> me tell there, you... I was there, Gandalf. <laughs> I, was, I was in the war, literally. Because <laughs> that's where you had to go. And I saw the Shout channel, and every fucking day at 3am, there's some bitch who's like... God damn, I hate grinding out these fates. <laughs> People don't know what they want. You want free relics? No, you'll work for them, bitch. You better work. You get. Oh, why me? What did I do? Okay, bye. <laughs> Ow. Ah, there we go. It always takes slightly longer than I thought it would be. <laughs> I finally let it build to 5k. I'm sitting on 20k for strategic yes. arc nines. That's what, that's what they're for. Yeah. That's what you gotta do. It's about the strategic. I could add new stuff at any time. You don't know. You had Cult of the Lamb. Did you spend your points then, chat? In chat's defense, I forgot that it doesn't, that it doesn't auto activate it like it does the Right, yes. So we spent half the stream without the totem, t totem turned on, but then the latter half of the stream, uh, Voz especially, went absolutely nuts on it. Bless them. <sighs> Yo, shout out to Voz in VR last night. I don't think Voz is actually here at the moment. Uh, as a couple people might know yeah. about the, uh, the the little can asset that I'm making. Uh, oh I'm, yeah. I'm trying. I, I I've got the I've got it in VR perfectly fine, but I can't I can't get the uh, open to work. Like you're supposed to be able to touch it and it opens and it goes mm -hmm. and and things like that. And I I couldn't get it to work. And I was talking to Voz about it, and I had had the item in my hand, and I was there just sort of t tapping at it and being like, it's not working. It's not. I don't know what's wrong with it. And I was like, I don't know if what, what's wrong with like the animation or the parameter menu or the avatar menu. So like, and we're both just there, just like basically fidgeting with it like a fidget cube and then we both go silent as we both just hear <sharp inhale> and we both just stare down at this can as it opens and there's just this silent pause and I'm just like at the top of my voice I'm like why did it do that <laughs> <laughs> we saw you as we were playing FF last night we saw you opening and closing VR chat and we we're like god knows what she's doing in there. <laughs> it's valid but yeah, because it's typical game design now, really, of like, I did everything I thought I should and it wasn't working, and then I literally changed nothing, and then it worked, and I was like, what? Why did it do that? So I reset, loaded back in, having not changed anything, and I opened it, uh, and I grabbed it, and poked it, and it didn't do anything. <laughs> And so, you know, if I had hand tracking, this would be so funny because Voz literally watched me basically sit on the floor holding this can in VR <laughs> and I was just flapping my hand at it repeatedly and basically just like, <laughs> just like, why won't you work? Why won't you work? Why won't you? <laughs> just sitting there, just flapping at it for like 10 minutes and then randomly it would just go <laughs> and open. And I was like, <laughs> what is the thing? Why? <laughs> <laughs> make it make sense. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I was, uh, all I could say to Voz was like, well, it, the animation and the sound works because we've seen it in-game. Like, I've seen it, you've seen it, it syncs. So the problem must be the trigger. And I thought the trigger was the bit that was correct. <laughs> I thought it was the animation well, that was clearly bugged. not. Yeah, I thought the trigger was correct and the animation was bugged. But I said, well, it must be the trigger because it's not fully triggering when we, when we hit it. But at some point, we hit it correctly and it, and it opens. So I'm like, okay, one problem solved, 20 more discovered, I guess, which is just so... It's just typical game design. Every time. Yep. Yeah, so I'm baffled. The, the mount doesn't actually go faster, it just has speed lines. It just has speed lines. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, I get... Because I explained to... I explained Voz through it, like, now that they were in VR, I explained him through it of like, you know, go to this setting in the menu and tick this and it'll let you see the triggers. And I was like, can you see the yellow spheres? Can you see the blue spheres floating in the air right now? And they were like, oh god, I can. 
uh, and I was like, yeah, those are the those are the triggers, you know, that that, that come as standard with VR chat. You know, if you look at your hands, they get high, they become uh, golden go hands, like g string hands. <laughs> g string. Yeah, it literally, if you turn on show colliders and you look at your hands, ha the hands have inbuilt colliders, so you can pick stuff up. <coughs> so you can see them. Each finger is a little yellow tube, and I was like, well, uh, hold up the cat, and you see you can see the yellow top on top of it. It's got a collider on it. And I said the, hmm. the key thing of why I was like, well, the trigger is working, the animation is, isn't, is that if two colliders touch, they turn green. And I was like, you can see it turning green. So it's registering that it's being touched. So that's why I was like, well, the trigger's working. <laughs> so to just flail about at it randomly and for it to work, I was like, so the trigger isn't the working? The trigger's working and the animation's working, but the connection between the trigger and the animation is working. Something, something along those lines. So I haven't had a chance to modify it since then. But yeah, I went to I went to bed fuming. Actually, in fact, let me show you the picture. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is about uh, to happen? Picture, VR chat. Me and Voz in VR. <laughs> A vehicle. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I, just, I even posted this in the Discord to be like, this picture does not communicate how angry I was with this. Hand. No, it it does because I know what your face would look like in real life to make that happen. <laughs> I'm just glaring at this open. I can hand. hear the. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yep, hundred percent the sound I was making. <laughs> yeah, I know you. Yeah, I was. I was so upset. You. You. Would th it's one of those things that you would think it would be like, oh, it works, huzzah! I was like, no, I was sitting no, there going, it was fuming. Why does it work? I'm angry. Why does it go? <laughs> oh my god! But then also, I have this very cute picture of me in a new avatar called Jex, and me just chilling on this beanbag. Oh, hell yeah. I look so cute. Yeah, chillin'. And then we went and played a game that was like Doom... No, no, not, not Doom, Quake. We, we played Quake in VR, and you can't see it because it's been cut off, but I'm ranking it. The reason I'm pointing is because, like, I did well on the leaderboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did well on the leaderboard. <laughs> yeah, I discovered a new avatar. It's very cute. Looks it's called, it. It's called a Chex. More people yeah. should use them. Hang on, let me find Voz's photo, because as part of, we've gone down the rabbit hole now. As part of uh -oh. explaining, as part of explaining to him about how colliders and the triggers worked and how you could see them in the R chat, uh, the jet the Jex model specifically comes with an inbuilt collider on the snoot, mm -hmm. uh, and it's programmed so that if you boop snoots with another Jex, it makes a little cute face. So I was like turning. So I was like copy the copy the avatar off me, turn into a Jex, and and we'll do a little little snoot wiggle. Uh, let's see, we are pictures. These are so cute. So it's if the if if the two noses, so you nose nuzzle each other, and it does that little open mouth. So there's me nuzzling their nose. And then them nuzzling my nose. <laughs> yeah, and it, trigger, cute. and it triggers a little happy face. And I was like, look how cute these are. More people need to wear Jexes because Jexes are adorable. And there's me looking concerned because a drunk guy joined into the instance. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, a guy walks in and was like, Voss, you're amazing. This guy's amazing. And I was just stood there, just like, I don't know who you <laughs> Wild. Oh my goodness. So I look so concerned. Concerned. Yeah. That uh, is the face you make when someone turns up who you don't know. Yeah, that is how I how I am with strangers. I also don't know how to deal with drunk people very well either. Yeah, amen. So yeah, jet jets are cute and more people need to wear them. Yep. It's a very it's a very recent model and it's very cute and I love it a lot. Are we getting a leprechaun gammy of this Thursday because it's the day before Paddy's Day? Can you imagine a set of circumstances considering where you are presently where I can make that happen? <laughs> I think 
if a leprechaun appeared, every single player would immediately curb stomp it because they would just be like, yeah. no, don't trust you that You cannot shit. be here right now. There's no world in which you should reasonably appear in this house. Are we, play we are playing this week, are we? Are we are playing this week, okay. yes. I should be working on it right now, but I'm writing poetry yeah. instead. It, it, it did take me a good half an hour last week on Thursday to be like, are we playing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> doing the math. It's like, did, was it this week that K is not available? <laughs> I, mean, I, I did my typical thing that I normally do, which is I sat and wait until like quarter past eight, and when there was no activity, I was like, okay, we're not, we're not doing it. <laughs> you just scrolled slightly up in the Ocart channel, and you would have seen the big X. That <laughs> requires having a brain cell. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's you know the law. This is fine. I can tell from just reading this back. I've been um, beginning. <laughs> I've been beginning to read um, uh, Dante's Inferno. <laughs> oh, fun. Uh, I got four cantos in before I fell asleep. Not a bit. Um, <laughs> but I can tell in reading this that I've been uh, I'm reading that. It's so funny because it really is like fanfic. <laughs> really? <laughs> like, the first thing that happens is the, the main character... Who's, who may or may not be Dante is probably Dante. Um, <laughs> it's like trying to go into hell like Orpheus and that, right? Mm -hmm. And immediately meets um, a... <laughs> I think it's a leopard or a tiger. I think it's a leopard. That is Virgil, as in like the Roman poet. Oh. Um, who like was the, the writer's like the protagonists, like, um, who they looked up to in life. And he he's like, why are you not in hell? And it's like, because he's just too good, basically. <laughs> it's like, but all the other classical poets are in hell. It's like, don't worry about it. <laughs> and, like, you go through the top layers of, like, limbo and, like, you know, the first, the first floors, basically. And he, like, meets, like, Achilles and, like, Homer. And it's like, at this point, you're just having fun. <laughs> Is that not you're what just writing, writing should be? <laughs> you're just, yeah, exactly. You're just writing hell fanfic, and I love that for you. I love, one of my favourite things in studying literature is when you go and read like an old piece of writing that is meant to be like a classic or a pinnacle and it has elements that are deeply silly. <laughs> I mean it was wild for, it was wild for me to sit and, and listen through Dracula and go this yeah, isn't, it's this, stupid. Isn't, this isn't this isn't all that good if I'll be honest. No, it's, this is it's not silly. A, this is not a good book. It's not really a good story really. <laughs> No! I was, like, I was like, huh, how did this become a classic? Because it's not great. <laughs> I just, that's my favourite shit. It's just when it's inexplicable <laughs> sometimes. Listening, to, listening um, to Dracula and being, and realising it was a classic literally must have been like, damn bitch, you live like this? Because it was like, <laughs> if, this, if this was considered good, then what was the other shit you were reading? <laughs> no! Dracula was never considered good. Okay. Dracula was always considered shit. <laughs> Dracula, um, <laughs> Dracula was never considered good. Everyone considered Dracula pulpy and kind of, um, well, to be honest, at the time, it was too provocative. It was, you know, the, the people are horny. There's it's a very horny book. It is a very horny book. It is you know, a very like, horny book. They made me are we about Dracula crossovers again? No, we're just talking about Dracula. We're just talking the about book. straight up Dracula. It, it is horny and it made me uncomfortable. It, but like, that's why people didn't like it. And the, you know, it, 
it was already part of a subgenre that already existed. Dracula didn't start vampire fiction. Carmilla did that. <laughs> the monk did that. Um, but it was just part of the kind of, I mean, we we have like cult movies now. It was of the same. There we go. It was the same kind of thing as the Rocky Horror Show is to us. Right. Like, it's not. Is the Rocky Horror Show good? Kind of. Is the Rocky Horror Show fun? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> is it hard to watch sometimes and like weird and perverse and all yeah. kinds of things? Yeah, yes. It's, yeah. It's That's not, what it's Dracula not, was it, to yeah, the nineteenth century audience. It, it's not about the actual content. It's about what it stands for and represents. Mm -hmm. And then it rippled out from there. Like, what stuck around from Dracula wasn't necessarily like Dracula, that kind of came later, but it was the kind of, it was just part of the bigger gothic stuff of like, it's like that and Frankenstein and Jekyll and Hyde. It was yeah. right on the They're like- They're all synonymous really, aren't they? Yeah, it's, it's, sort of it's right on that together. wave of like, maybe, the supernatural and science can exist and in fact still like the things that are supernatural can still be scary in light of science mm -hmm. um but also that like play very much playing with the end of the enlightenment early victorian sensibilities <laughs> like it's ridiculous in dracula that they really think that they can scientifically explain everything that's happening to them yeah it's abjectly ridiculous. They encounter things that should not and cannot be possible, and they're like, if I record this on a phonograph, it must be true. <laughs> yeah, I remember, I remember that, like, <laughs> either you said it or it was, like, on a Tumblr post or something where it was like, the most tragic thing about Dracula is that none of the characters realize they are in Dracula. It, um, that's a very popular Tumblr post, but it's correct, yeah. If it's, it's f actively funny to read Dracula because even if you've never read or seen an interpretation of Dracula, you know the events of Dracula. Yeah. You know about as much of Dracula. You know way more about Dracula than any character in that book ever does. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, even even if you're not a big fan of of that genre or stuff, people yeah. know what vampires are. It's just that it's yeah. just like a bit of a, you know, it's just something you learn, you know, growing up as a bit of mythology. Culturally, yeah. Culturally, you just learn what vampires are. You know, you get told stories, you see them on Halloween, you know what a, you know what a vampire is. Not a single person other than obviously Van Helsing, Van Helsing knows what a vampire is. <laughs> yeah. Um I I will tell you with some authority for people out there. There are two types of classic fiction. There is classic fiction, fiction that is classic for a reason, and classic fiction that is classic by happenstance. Dracula is of the latter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dracula is significant because of what it became, not because of what it is. <laughs> there are plenty of classic books that are just worth reading because they are somehow still good. <laughs> um fucking the great gatsby is objectively good i think the picture of dorian gray is great uh any jane austen novel unfortunately is very good <laughs> unfortunately. you know yeah I, I do i like reading them eh, not really do i acknowledge they are good yes <laughs> well, everybody's allowed um, taste like i mean you literally just say you know the great Sp gatsby gatsby is good i agree that it's also good but it's not my kind of thing i can't say yes, i can't say 100%. i particularly enjoyed it but i could appreciate it from a subjective perspective yeah 100 percent. yeah <laughs> hi boss oh hi I was rega I, I regaled people about half an hour ago about the events of last night of me losing my goddamn mind <laughs> over can. that goddamn yeah. can. <laughs> but yeah, we apologize for once again talking about Dracula on this stream. <laughs> I will get Blue to read other classic novels that we can talk about. <laughs> I ended up um, going off about Greek myth last night in a stunning ton of events. But someone, I think it was Das, earnestly asked me a question about the Odyssey, and if it was doomed from there. Oh, you, Blue, you actually know what this means. Holy shit. Yes, mm -hmm. I had to explain the Telemachus marrying Circe thing. Oh, God. <laughs> Telemachus. Ah. Yes. 
Yes, Telemachus and Circe. And I was like, yes, Telemachus and Telegonus are two different things. Yeah. <laughs> See, I have different pronunciation to you because I listened to an audiobook and they pronounce yes. it as... Uh, I think the way you're saying Telemachus is actually correct. Uh, uh, um, t- Telemachus and Telegonus is how they pronounce it in yes. the book. I think that is actually technically correct. I just can't change <laughs> because uh, I read these things in my head first and that it stuck like that. <laughs> you did do damn while I was setting you up. Yeah, you did open it with what Oak Heart characters are what Greek myth characters. And I knew that was a setup, but I went for it anyway. What were the answers? <laughs> Damn it, I knew you were going to say that. I was literally like, I need to remember now very quickly. You're going br- yeah, um, to bring it up and not expect me to go well. <laughs> um, Zal, I said Odysseus, Daedalus is too obvious. Yeah, Daedalus is a little too obvious. I think Odysseus is actually on the nose for yeah, Zal. I can see it. Um, uh, Bane is either Hector or Telemachus. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh fuck! What did I say for Tala? I said Achilles is not a bad pull for Tala, but there's a better one, and I can't remember what the better one was. Fair enough. Because <laughs> Lacan is also too obvious. It's just like a werewolf. <clears throat> um. Fuck! What did I say? Oh, someone like Clymnestra. Someone who's like defined by. Yes, I think I said Clymnestra because. Mm. She spends 10 years at waiting to take revenge for the loss of her daughter, which isn't like a mile off. No, it's not far off. It's uh, like characters that are defined by revenge in Greek myth are like tricky because <laughs> you get like Achilles, but Achilles is almost too uh, concerned with his grand narrative. Right. You know, he does what he does because he wants glory, which is not Tala. No, that's not Tala of the slightest. It's, it's hard to find people who are, like, that defined by revenge, apart from people like Clemnestra, who then the narrative... The narrative of Greek myth is, like, an example of not what not to do. <laughs> I mean, Tala's um, a great example of not what to yeah, do. Yeah, <laughs> 100%. That's why I said it's not a bad pull. Um, hurry... Oh my god, who did I say for hurry? Definitely had a clear answer, but now I can't. Remember. I said, "Oh, I said, kind of Cassandra because of the communication mm-hmm. um, issue," but I can't remember what I said in terms of more like personality. Yeah, I can't, I can't remember what the remember. butt was. <laughs> yeah, there was a butt, but I don't remember what it was. Nope, I don't remember the details. I was also just very stuck in. Um, I, I was just thinking about Troy for some reason. So it's like, there's way more Greek myth than just Troy. I just can't think of any right now. Mm. <laughs> I think I said for Hurry as well, like, you're more likely to get better pulls from, like, um, Aenads and Nymphs and things. Like, things that aren't fully mortal people. Mm-hmm. Because Hurry has a little bit of that vibe. Yes. I can read that. This is a good conversation because I started working on my thesis again today. Like hey, hardcore, so. fair enough. Getting my brain going. Mm-hmm. You gotta chip away. Stack. Gotta, you gotta chip away at it. Yep. This thing was fun. Yeah, it was. A, it was a fun debate. I like thinking about it. I'll take any excuse to talk about mythology. You know me, especially Greek mythology. Yeah, yeah. Do I have to bring up the clip because it's fresh in my brain because I went through all my clips today? <laughs> no. <laughs> what do you have? The Odyssey. No. Well, yeah, yeah. Because you said that you can't be knife set of Greek soldiers because they're all bastards. Yeah. And I stand by that because I was like, well, Ajax kind of, but no, Ajax does some fucking heinous shit to Cassandra and other people. So it's like, I, I was kind of going down the, the Greek camp in Troy and I was like, no, too evil, no, too evil. <laughs> it was either, like, my, my problem with Thane was going, like, people were either too evil or too stupid. But, I, uh, yeah, Hector's a good pull and Telemachus is a good pull, I 
anything. I, I, understandably, because of their names, I always get Telemachus and Telegonus mixed up. You're meant to. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally the point. Yes, um, and a lot of mythology, you know, there's a lot of... I mean, fucking uh, Telegonus isn't in the Odyssey. <laughs> like, um, the existence of Telegonus was not a um, ubiquitous thing. It was like a, a different strain of the story, basically. Right. Because there was a thing... Here we go. It's called the mm, Tel Telegoniad or something, um, which is basically um, about how Odysseus dies. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all to do with Telegonus. You know what happens because you've read Cers. Yes, um, and that pulls from happens. that. Um, but that was not written by Homer, and that was also like a. Oh God, I have to backtrack a little bit here. There was a. <laughs> so, I hate myself. We've um, unlocked the specialist subject, guys. I'm so sorry. I Last also week, don't want to be doing what I'm doing. Talking about Pokemon, and I had to explain, like, you know, I was like, why does this Pokemon look like this? And I was like, these are the reasons. <laughs> I also don't want me to be like this. Um, so Homer is not original in about every way conceivable because there's a decent amount of it. Basically, is the Odyssey and the Iliad fanfic? Kind of. Um, because the stories that he's referring to, so like, for, let's say the Iliad, right? Mm -hmm. the, Tro the events of the Trojan War were just commonly understood in culture. It was like a shared story that was very well known. Mm -hmm. Whether it was based on a real war or Troy was a real place, kind of doesn't matter. But basically, people are often quite surprised if they know the events of the Iliad, uh, if they think they know the events of the Trojan War, because a lot of what people know about Trojan War is not in the Iliad. Because the Iliad just covers basically when Patroclus dies. Um, because Homer was kind of exploring a section of the story, but it was people who were hearing it knew the full story mm -hmm. from start to finish. Knew what, you know, uh, Paris abducting Helen is not in the Iliad, but people know that that's kind of what the Trojan was about. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, there were things like... Um, uh, the Telegoniad or whatever the fuck it was called, um, were responding to the kind of story of Odysseus, right? They were not responding to Homer's Odyssey mm -hmm. as we would know it now. So, like, they might have never... in Like, people might have heard those two versions of events and never heard the other one. Like... It was just, it depended where on in Greece you were, what you read, whether you heard it orally or whether it was in a library, like in Alexandria or something. Like, it is fascinating. <laughs> um, because that's kind of why Telegonus is not... He's not in every account you'll find uh, in the Greek or in the Roman, the later Roman stuff. Telegonus. Mm -hmm. Telegonus isn't in um, Ovid's account of Odysseus's journey. Like, because that version of that story was not the one that they heard or didn't want to include it because it made things too complicated. You know, it's it is a problem for Homer narratively to present Penelope the way that he does as a loyal and waiting wife uh, if Odysseus has a child with another woman. <laughs> He can fool around all he wants, but it's different if there's children. Because in the Greek time, children implied... Yeah. Yes, it, it implied um, where the land would go, titles, etc. Yes. Especially another son. Um, so it's fun for the drama, <laughs> right? If, if Odysseus has another son by another woman, that's fun for drama. But for people who wanted just like the glory of Odysseus, that's a problem for his legacy. Especially because, obviously, in as you know in Circe, um, the whole thing where Telegonus kills Odysseus by accident because he's in a mad PTSD rage, yep. that's a problem for the way that Homer displayed <laughs> Odysseus in the, in the uh, Odyssey. So, Yeah, I hope you all enjoy it. <laughs>
We do. This is literally my specialist subject. It is. It's not even, not even like as a bit. Like I academically specialize. At least your specialist su subject could be classed as something <laughs> academical. My specialist subject comes from video games. I also have that Dragon Age. How many times do I have to tell you replaying Inquisition is not a personality trait? <laughs> yes, it is. I will make it happen. I can listen to girls for years. I don't know why. I wouldn't. <laughs> oh. Bro, we're, we're all fans of listening to people talk a bit about their specialist subjects. I put that... um that list up on Twitter as a bit. Oh my god, it's about 85,000 things I could unpack about that. But of uh, video essays I would make if I could, if I had the skill. <laughs> and sometimes I think I should really get into it because people do listen to me say some shit. Yeah, that's true. Naren got crafting mentor in 14. Hey! That's real. That really happened. Good lord, man. There's a mentor in the group. Mentor, Naren was a crafting mentor and didn't realize. I had to be like, wait a minute. <laughs> Bruh. You have, you've done it. <laughs> you have the thing. I'm nearly there. I'm nearly there. I need to get my weaver up one level and I need to gather like a hundred uh, collectibles, which is not as hard as it sounds. I've nearly got full mentor, weirdly enough. <laughs> So I could be universally hated by the community. <laughs> but um, yeah, but yeah, I put that list up of um of video essays I would make if I had editing ability and time, and it. <gasps> Hello, child. <gasps> There's a screaming baby. How are you feeling? <laughs> feeling yourself? Come have a cuddle. Come have a cuddle. Hello. Three, three left or Omni Knight. You three levels or three classes? Three levels, right? Hello. I can't believe I finally posted the list of video essays I would make in a thread about Disney's Dream Life Valley. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was game, fucked that up. That game really be a roller coaster for you, huh? Every day, I, I at this point, log in just to see what bullshit. I got Stitch today. Yay! I found Stitch. Good boy! Stitch is a very... Stitch uh, will fully just pull out a ukulele and do a full ukulele song at the moment's notice. Good. Love that for him. Mm-hmm. Three classes. Makes sense. Yeah, where was that thread so I can remember what I was talking about? Yeah, it's big cuddle baby. Oh my god, yes. So, oh my god, the pure... <laughs> the pure... It was fucking wild. I was just like, I unlocked a new area. And it was like, it's covered in a blizzard. Find the source of the blizzard. I was like, okay. Um, and I find... Elsa. Fucking... Fucking... No, it wasn't Elsa. She's already here and she's fine. She also couldn't stop it because she tried. But speaking of Frozen, <laughs> it was fucking Olaf... Uh, Olaf was stuck in this fucking cave. I don't. I don't particularly like Olaf from Frozen. I think he's just kind of cringe. But um, he was just in this cave that was literally like I. It was I. <laughs> I wish. I wish I had been like streaming or something. I wish someone could have seen the slow revelation of things. <laughs> I just walk into this cave. Olaf. Immediate reaction. Ah, oh, fuck. I fucking hate Olaf. Second reaction. He has no eyes, no nose, and no arms. Oh, God. And I'm like, what the fuck? And he's like, oh, hi. Because <laughs> it's Olaf from Frozen. He can never express an emotion other than just like, ah. Um, so it's like, okay. He's like, the squirrels took my arms. And it's like, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Why, what is this cave? And I look See, around the Disney. cave. And I look around the cave. It is covered in books and dust and like strange markings on the floor, like ritual markings. And I'm like, okay. And then I pan the camera a little bit more and realize the entire, like 
the entire walls of this cave are covered in like insane mad writing like you know like in any video game or D D or whatever when someone's been locked in a space and has gone mad and just covered the walls in yeah. it was that it was fully that <laughs> it was like the, the absolute disley <laughs> it's like i'm just having this very disney conversation with olaf being like oh darn the squirrels took my arms please go get them and i'm looking around in this like hole of madness <laughs> there's a dark portal on the other wall and all this like magic equipment and i'm like the fuck happened he's like oh yeah the forgotten the forgotten is me hi um the Forgotten stole my arms when I was trying to stop them from taking the orb of happiness away from Dreamlight Valley. <laughs> it's like, what? Um, and you see like these fucked up visions of the Forgotten. Again, it's you. It's it's you. Um, literally like going insane in this cave. <laughs> and it's like, fucking, it's so wild. Also, Olaf makes a reference to, I think, the grave of John Keats. And it... <laughs> <laughs> this is a Disney game. Yeah, li literally a tweet. Anyway, I found a oh, love trap to the cave where a manifestation of my abandoned childhood went insane, covered the walls in mad ramblings, and was nearly consumed by thorns. Also, squirrels took his arms, but I can fix that part. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? It, it, the whole game is like this. It's just but like it's so weird. like I don't I don't want to support the mouse in any way. But the, whenever you tell me about this game, I'm like I'm gonna end up playing this because I'm just so curious yeah. of what the hell you're even talking about. I was gonna I was gonna stream it today. Maybe I'll stream it in the day tomorrow. Before oh no, you've got a stream on the day tomorrow, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow's my double day. Oh, I mean, you can do you can do you. <laughs> no, I'm not taking views away from you. What's Thank fun? you. But um, maybe maybe uh, Thursday then. Yeah. Um, it's Thursday evening. Can you stream in the day, right? We have D &D. Oh, I'll find. <laughs> oh, we have D and D. Fuck. Unless you want to stream between the hours of like five and eight. <laughs> yeah, honestly. But I'll find some time this week. I should have done it today. I'll find some time this week just to stream it, just so you can see. And like, nothing weird will happen. It will be very normal. <laughs> I can almost guarantee it. We literally encountered that last session. I found this after last session. <laughs> I've uh, speaking of uh, the last session of D and D we played. I've wanted to put that that creature in a session for forever. Mm -hmm. I was so excited. Literally since that book came out, I was like, I want to put this in because this is my whole shit. Yeah, it's a, it's like a ghost that died because knowledge, and it. <laughs> It possesses someone into mindlessly trying to find the piece of knowledge that killed them, basically. But it could have been written for my campaign. Yeah, it's very fitting. So close to being a werewolf. I nearly let it happen. You're not allowed, it's my thing! It would have been worse lycanthropy, though. You're not allowed to steal my thing, because then I don't have it, or then I won't be special. <laughs> <laughs> It's my thing! Leave me alone! The whole, whole reason we're in the place that we're at is because it's special. Yeah, but it's my special werewolfness. <laughs> Marry Lee and be a queen? Yeah. That's a good way to artificially create specialness. I'm trying to fucking save her first. Yeah, if she's alive, yeah, sure. I'm working on it. It's a yeah. work in progress. <laughs> Everything's a work in progress. Tala as monarchy is just a funny thing to think yes, about. Yes, it's a funny mental image. Oh god, the work in progress. Aim if that in my fucking life. <laughs> Amen. Oh my god, speaking of RPGs, if I may, mm. there is a bundle going around at the moment. We talk about solo RPGs and little indie RPGs a lot yeah. on this here stream. There is a bundle going around right now for trans rights in Florida. They do one every, every year for whatever American state is having the worst time with trans rights. Um, and it's like five dollars, American dollars. Um, and it's like 500 indie RPGs for a fiver. Uh, and they've raised nearly $100,000 for 
Uh, I've pulled it up right here. There's a bunch of the ones that we've talked about. Uh, Mandrake Sanctuary's in there. Uh, Fool's Errand is in there. There's a bunch of them. But also Sword Lesbians is in there. And like, Ooh. who doesn't want Sword Lesbians? Sweaters by Hedgehog. Like, who wouldn't want this shit? But there's, there's like indie RPGs and like uh, supplements for for other RPGs. Like, it's it's a mix. Go have a po have a poke if you want to throw money that way you can. Hey. Um, but I figure because we talk about this shit a lot on this stream, it's probably a good place to go have a look. Absolutely. And that's that's how I ended up with the hoard that I've had is I just got like a cheap bundle on it. Should I? Own. Yeah. I will almost definitely pick it up. The only reason I haven't done it so far is because I will have to sort him all into the, <laughs> the folders, my folding system. When I do get it, and there's 500 of them in here. Yeah, Sherwood's in here. I know I've talked about Sherwood on this stream yes. before. And also a game called Birds Love Dirt, where the description is, be a bird, play in the dirt, have fun. What more could you want? It's me! It's for me! It's for you. Yeah, there's a lot of ones in here that are like, is for you, is for me. That's always how it goes. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, go enjoy that. Trans rights. <laughs> trans rights. Trans rights. Trans rights. Uh, I'm gonna try and write another poem. I've really talked too much this damn stream. I haven't talked enough. I always, I always <laughs> worry that I'm, I don't talk enough for someone who is a streamer. <laughs> Which is why I always have. I think to you do. Chill tag. I think you do when um you need to. <laughs> I've just been talking a lot. Stretch. How dare you? <laughs> Do you know what I did pick up this week? I don't know if I'm actually going to play it the whole way through, but I did just want to have a look at it. it was Pentiment, no, which is one. which is a game that is entirely drawn like medieval illuminated manuscripts. Oh, that one! No, I have heard of it. Okay, I knew yeah. the game. I didn't know the name. No, I was in the exact same boat when I looked over. I was like, oh, it's that one. That one. Um, it's a wild ride so far. Mm -hmm. Um. It's the first game I've ever played where I've had to have... There's an in-game glossary, and I have needed it. Oh. <laughs> um, because it's set in a very specific time period, um, and the the character that you start off as is a... Um, he, he's making an illuminated manuscript, but he's, being, he's on commission from the church, mm -hmm. which means that he spends most of his time working in the abbey. Um, but it means that, like, characters... And it's in uh, the Holy Roman Empire, I think, is where it's set. Um, but he's from Hamburg. Um, so, like, they make a lot of specific references to, like, church process. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> my, my closest approximation to this is the events of the monk, and that's not... You shouldn't use that as a reference for anything. Um... But yeah, I don't know if I'll play it the whole way through because it's a lot of reading, but um, which is, I know, I ironic coming from me. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it's a weird little game, but it looks good. Fair enough. It's just also just a very cool concept. Like, you don't see games that either look like that. It looks gorgeous, Yeah. first of all. And like, every time there's a text dialogue, they'll like, it, like there's different texts for what status the person talking is which is how illuminated manuscripts work mm -hmm. um so like for peasants it's like peasants like pretty scratchy script and then for like people in the church they get the full like illuminated beautiful and like anytime anyone mentions like god or like any important person it's like it's like um elaborated it's really cool. It's a really cool concept for a game. And it is an RPG, so you can kind of, you know, multi-choice. Yeah, you kind of play your character a little bit. 
I've I've decided to make this character. There was a lot of dialogue in the first like there was a it opens with a dream sequence where he's like talking to his like as, like his idols. So it's like Plato. <laughs> you know, it's a weird it's a weird little dream uh. sequence. But it's it's part of like you get a lot of dialogue options about like what kind of character you are. And I was like, I'm just gonna play this guy like a thought. <laughs> Because there was a lot of dialogue options that were like, uh, I was sent away from the uh, library for distracting the nuns. <laughs> and I was like, yep, sure, let's go for it. But I'm not sure if you play the same character for the whole game because it has like the whole, it opens with a book and you go into that one scene with this guy and it says chapter one. So I'm like, I don't know if you play this character for the whole game or whether you jump around characters. Oh, uh, right. I'm not sure. I'm also not sure what the plot of the overarching game is. I'm still very much in the beginning. The music that I'm listening to has got a little bit too chill and now my brain is sleepy. <laughs> my music has 100% gone the opposite way. <laughs> Thank God. The energy has to... <laughs> you have to overtake. It's so hard not to shrimp painting minis. It's so hard not to shrimp. Full yeah, stop. it's it's hard not to shrimp. But yeah, minis especially because the natural is to just sort of like, you know, get it yeah. close. I had to do a bunch of sewing today and like I was sewing with like grey thread on like black and grey fabric, so I was literally like <laughs> I also snapped a needle today with my bare hands. Wow. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> I thought for a second it had gone into my hand, but it didn't, thank e god. It was a very thin needle, to be fair. But it was like a Travis Willingham, did you just break a mechanical pencil moment? Ah, yes. <laughs> Oh, my brain is not with me. But I have written two poems, so that's not bad. Maybe I take another crack at that one that I hate editing. Oops. Wow. I have a bunch of OCAR prep I need to do as well. At some point I need to do that. Bet that I'll do it on Thursday. Bet. I shouldn't, because I have more prep to do than I can do in one day, but there we go. Full health check. Oh, my back just cracked. Hopefully you didn't hear that. Hopefully you didn't hear my arms. <laughs> We're functioning. Mm -hmm. Yo, two days till new Hosier music. <gasps> I'm so excited. Or three days even. I'm so excited for new Hosier music. Yeah, the stuff they've released from the EP so far is like so good. Every time they put a video up on YouTube, I'm like, on uh, Twitter, I'm like, yes. It was literally like, I, I need to do one more EP, but the album will be out by the end of the year, I promise. <laughs> like, yeah, man. You do whatever. Uh, Excuse me. All well said. 
Blue, did I send you the cat ASMR video? No, what? I should have done. I found the greatest video ever made last night. I found a, I think it's Korean, is that language? Um, but it's a video of someone who does ASMR, but it's like cat spa and they have really fluffy cats and they do like, Aww. they like pretend to give them little hair treatments and things. It's very cute. Also the subtitles on it are very funny because <laughs> <laughs> the subtitles on it are in English, but it's mostly just them being like, look how stupid they are, <laughs> but like affectionately. That's the correct way to talk to cats. Yeah. I'll put it in chat for people. If people want just like a very cute thing to watch, there you go. It's deeply soothing to watch. <laughs> I should specify it's all pretend. The cat doesn't actually. The cat's just snoozing and having a good time. <laughs> There's no actual products used on the cat. Hey, oh nice my one there. goodness, look at this. Why? I've just loaded yeah, it up. You just opened it. <laughs> it's just having a sleep. No more stream, we're just watching this video. <laughs> oh, she has he, two cats he's though. gone. Look at that ba <laughs> That baby is out. Oh. Wait until it switches. This is the preview, so you'll just see little shots. Oh, look. look at the other cat! She's only like six months old. <laughs> All the plushies. What the heck are those things they're licking? Obviously, they must be some sort of cat treat, but I've never seen them before. Yeah. <laughs> that cat is going for it. They're just like, this is the thing. This is, this the, is thing. the best. <laughs> Your baby. Oh, now they got some food. Oh. If you skip it forward a little bit, you'll see the fluffy. Are, these cat balls are a good idea. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just the most blissed out cat you've ever seen. <laughs> that bed has to be heated for that cat to be so happy. <laughs> it's says good night, baby. It's a baby bed. <laughs> I also just love this RP that this cat is like a supermodel. <laughs> like a like a, a Korean idol. Beans! <laughs> oh my god, I discovered from this video that in Korea they don't call them beans, they call them jellies. Jelly! The the cat boys, oh, they call them the jellies. The jelly beans! <laughs> you have a photo shoot scheduled for headshots. Yeah, I just love it. This is the whole stream now. This is the next this half hour. This is amazing. Oh my god. This is the greatest video in existence. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness. <laughs> A little brushy. <laughs> I watched this entire video. Oh my god. <laughs> I I'm fell asleep watching this video. Go for a little bit. Uh, it does actually legitimately have to shave out the little paw pads, but yes, that's very that, is, that is something that uh, quite a few cat breeds have to do. Tickle your feet like friends' paws! They're like, oh. <laughs> like, wait, this is real? I'm actually having some stuff to 
Okay. Boop. Yeah. Boop. Yeah. Guys. Fluffy paws. Ticklish. Boop. Oh, look at their face! What a sweet yeah. baby! It's such a sweet baby. Oh, <laughs> gosh. You can skip forward a bit to the other cat if you want. He's <laughs> just lying there, just like, I'm good, I'm comfy. <laughs> yeah. At some point in the video, um, she like pokes the head, and the moment that she does, it immediately falls asleep again. And the subtitles are like, I don't know why, but every time you slightly touch her forehead, she falls asleep. <laughs> <laughs> this was already gone again. Just, just gone. Yeah, she's asleep. <laughs> oh yeah, look. Too. What do you guys call the toe beans in your countries besides toe beans and jellies? <laughs> oh, it's so cute. I've been like, my face physically hurts from grinning so hard. <laughs> oh, <it's so> <laughs> this is how you hold Sadie. That was my first thought. <laughs> we have come back and there are just children. <laughs> We're just watching a YouTube video now. We're not even doing art. <laughs> this is art. This is more art than Absolutely. we will ever make. <laughs> Cats are so happy. Look at this blissful face. <laughs> Big stretch. Big stretch. <laughs> I like that she's like trying to do this RP, but also like <laughs> just actually like mystified by how cute her cats are. <laughs> Again, I'll post it again at Jack. <laughs> everyone deserves this video in their lives. Also, just like go give it a like. <laughs> like. Because this person's clearly put so much effort into this video. They are so living cute. their best yeah. life. They have three cats? Apparently. I've fallen asleep by that point. Aww. I hope you all enjoyed that. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> Welcome to what happens to me late night on YouTube. It's so funny because I watch a lot of ASMR to fall asleep. So like every so often it will just, YouTube will just recommend me a piece of ASMR that's not in the language I speak because I listen to a lot of foreign language ASMR because I need to hear people talking, but it helps if I can't understand what they're saying. So every so often it will just throw me a video like that. <laughs> it's like, you know, I don't know how you knew, but okay. <laughs> it's truly the greatest video on the internet. Mm -hmm. Amazing that we didn't lose viewers during that. It's because our viewers have taste and they know good you're, shit when they see it. You're all mesmerized by the fluffiness of yeah. the kitty.
didn't put beans on this, but I changed my mind. I disagree with what? You having taste? <laughs> What the fuck? Huh, wild. Hmm. Just got a notification that someone went live on Twitch. Dodger's just gone live on Twitch. I was like, Dodger never streams at this time. She's playing Dead Cells, so clearly she's got the itch. <laughs> Maybe we raid Dukes after this. She's got like 20 viewers. She won't have 20 viewers for long. <laughs> no, she won't. We still have half an hour to go. She'll be she'll be easily in, in like probably like five hundred people by the time oh, yeah. we come to finish. Don't know how long she'll be streaming for, but just, just like blindsided by text bonus has gone live. I was like, now, <laughs> man. My brain's turned off now. It's alright, as I said, we got half an hour left. You can go into chill times. That's what happens when you guys get me started on Greek myth. I burn myself out too oh, quickly. No. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. Because I'm having your issue from yesterday, need skins, but I have to wait an hour for them. Yeah. I think I really need to just bite the bullet and buy a bunch of gear for my retainers and they actually be able to do that. <sighs> But yeah, I was, because I was, I, and the solution I kind of found, as much as it was time consuming, because I also need poetics for Relic, I would just alternate. Because <laughs> it takes about half hour to do a dungeon. On a good day. <laughs> the little kitty snore behind me I turn around and Sadie <laughs> looks like that cat from the video she's just on her side flat out, out of her mind sleepy she's on sleepy the baby. surprised I haven't seen Phoebe yet yeah actually I haven't seen the baby in so long I have to go summon her she can say goodnight I was um watching back I remember what I was watching back. It was one of your earlier tactic streams or something earlier while I was doing my makeup. 
and Phoebe had to stay up here with me for a bit while some uh, my nan was having a hearing appointment downstairs. <coughs> so she was just she does this thing because I normally sit on the kneeling chair. I just don't do it when I'm streaming. Um, where she'll like come right up to the edge here and she'll try and stand on my shoulder or like put her head on my shoulder, but she only does it if she can hear you. Aww. So like. <laughs> Because I just turned, I was like watching one of your videos, so they're like, she just was like, oh, friend? She wants to meet me and I want to meet her. <laughs> just, just through the headphones. Hey. Just push doggo. Yeah, she was cute earlier though. Because I gave up and went and lied down and she just kind of put her head like on my shoulder. Aww. and scratches. Been very cute. She's been very cute the last few days because the cat's been in pretty much constant trouble. So she's been like, "Yes, it's my time. <laughs> <laughs> I am the favorite once more." Mhm. Mm <coughs> Smudges on my screen. Blah. <sighs> oh my god, by the way, the other thing that happened while I was at Vicky's, mm -hmm. um, during the day is I had to kill a bit of time to wait for a train because a bunch of my trains were cancelled. Mm. Um, so Vicky was like, we were both too tired to do anything. So she, I was just like watching YouTube on my phone. She was like, put it on the TV. Why not? I'll watch anything. I was like, are you sure? And she was like, yeah. And so I put on, I was watching, um, I was watching H Bomber Guy's uh, video essay about the Roblox oof. <laughs> oof. <laughs> it's like a two hour long video. And I, halfway through, I had to go out and take a phone call, and I came back, and Vicky was just like this. She was like, this is fucking wild. I was like, I know. <laughs> also a great video, if people watch that. I, I go through phases, I think this is very common, where I just, like, as a comfort background noise, want the same video over and over again. Mm -hmm. Usually it's, like, episodes of, like, it's, like, previous secret sleepover streams or something and it, i'll just like literally common. yeah just listen to the same video over and over again because i just don't have like the mental energy to watch something new but i yeah. need sound yeah I but mean, I recently think that's common i mean recently I, knows I see spook rewatch old like markiplier videos all the time even though the yeah. mark markers are constantly uploading but spook would rather watch his old stuff repeatedly yeah exactly um but yeah at the moment it's been the roblox oof video <laughs> <laughs> Rage Bomber. Which is like, what a one to pick. It's like, it's that or the old um, SSS VODs of them playing It Takes Two. I used to watch Mark. I also used to watch Mark a long time ago. Yeah, same. I don't. I don't really watch him that much anymore. And neither does Spend... Spend... he just watches his old content. He doesn't watch any of his yeah. new stuff. I watch a lot more of Twitch these days than I do YouTube, which I know is kind of crazy, same. but kind of the same. I, I find yeah. my, I find myself, especially if I if I'm eat, eat, got like lunch to eat or thing, and I'm not streaming, obviously, uh, I'm gravitating more to opening Twitch to see who is streaming rather than opening YouTube to see what's yeah, uploaded. Yeah, I tend to find that YouTube is like too much 
Like, I mostly watch YouTube for video essays at the moment. There's a bunch of video essays I really like, and I'll, like, watch their stuff. But mostly I'm watching Twitch VODs because I just t I just tend to go, okay, well, what is Blue streaming? If not, what Secret Sleep have been streaming? And kind of go from there. But that was, that was, that's been true of me for a while. Is, because especially because I watch CR. <laughs> so I'm over here at least once a week. YouTube Shorts. YouTube Shorts is my actual enemy at the moment. Because I, uh, Blue knows this, but I deliberately got rid of TikTok because it was consuming too much of my time. But now every time I open YouTube on my phone, it defaults to YouTube Shorts. So the amount of time I've lost to YouTube Shorts is insane. Yeah, I lose a lot of time to TikTok, but like... But then saying that, I watch Twitch VODs, so... <laughs> it's like, do I watch a bunch of videos that are very short, or do I watch one video that's very long as background noise? <laughs> if I could destroy one thing, it's YouTube Shorts. Amen. It truly, like... Is a black hole, and I always come out of that black hole being like, I didn't want to do that. Yeah, I didn't mean. I, didn't I get mean to, to lose an hour, but I just did. Yeah, and I'll scroll to the point where it's like I've gone past all the stuff I like regularly watch, and like it's into like content it's just throwing at me that doesn't make me feel good. Like it, it's like weird and unsettling because mm -hmm. I scrolled through so many, and it's like I just don't want to be here. Like. <laughs> YouTube, people like who've been on YouTube for long enough, which I think is safe to say is most of us here. Yeah, let's be honest. YouTube's, YouTube has notoriously had a problem for attracting weird and unsettling stuff, and that's the stuff that YouTube tries to avoid pushing to people. But then it feels like for YouTube shorts, it just does the TikTok thing of just being like, who the fuck knows what that algorithm is? You could be shown anything. And it's like different for YouTube because YouTube's culture is very different to tiktoks yes it is and it just it doesn't it doesn't feel good <laughs> one more short video one hour later yeah yeah i can literally quantify how much time i've lost to youtube shorts is the upsetting thing and it's like yeah there's one or two people who post shorts that i'm like I actually am glad to see them. That's why I'm subbed to their channel. I see it in my subscription feed. I don't want to, like, RNG it on the YouTube Shorts page. Yeah, it, it's weird to have a problem where I dislike something because I engage with it so much. It feels like it's like, well, stop engaging with it. It's like, I kind of can't help it. Yeah. That's how TikTok is. every time like, I open you know, YouTube any, on my phone, it just I, takes me to it. Yeah, and and like it's kind of, it, like with TikTok, it's almost worse because it's like it, it, yeah, you, can't, it you can't even open up TikTok to be like, I want to do something else. Like you can with YouTube of like, oh, I want to find find a particular video or find some music. Even it's like, well, you're opening TikTok to look at TikToks, and in your brain, it's like, I'm just gonna scroll for five minutes. It's like it's never five minutes. No, it's never five minutes. I mean, you know, right? How crazy my TikTok addiction got. Yeah. Like, it was bad. <laughs> um, but, like, yeah, TikTok, TikTok's... I don't know which is worse, though, because when you open TikTok, you at least know what you're doing. Oftentimes, I'll open YouTube intending to put on background music or something, and because it opens on mobile to the shorts page, I it will just grab me without meaning to. You know, yeah. it's like, I didn't, I didn't consent to this. <laughs> I wanted to do something else. Yeah. I have to like brace myself when I open the app to be like, no. <laughs> yes, welcome to the internet. A hundred percent. It's a little bit of everything all the time. It's 
Bo Burnham's nail on the head. Yeah. Yep. There's too much stuff. And it's hard to actively not engage with it. Your time is their money. I'm and I'm and by the way, happy Pi Day. Yeah. Yeah, I'm entering I'm entering another phase of my life where I'm gonna have to start doing a bunch of social media blocking. So if my mental health seems to exponentially improve over the next few months, yeah. <laughs> you know why. It won't. Spoilers, it won't. Yeah. Congratulations, I literally cannot. <laughs> no, you made this your job. I Yay. made my job. <laughs> to be fair, when I say social media blocking, I don't count Twitch. <laughs> so. No, I, I, I wasn't counting Twitch in it either, but like, I need to, I need to use Twitter. And I, yeah. need, to, I need to use it more. Like, I, like, I try, I, I try to tweet out when I'm streaming, but I'm like, if, if my Twitter, if, if my Twitter stream, my Twitter feed is just me announcing streams people aren't going to want to follow that so i tr yeah, tr when i can i try to remember to tweet about things to try to encourage people to follow me which is yeah. hard because i, I never feel entering like her I... midlife crisis that's a bit late to the <laughs> thanks <laughs> yeah it's it's hard because it's yeah yeah, because it's part of what you need to do for your job. Yeah, yeah and I, but I'm, I'm one of those things where I'm like, well, this isn't interesting, so I'm not gonna, you know, it doesn't enter, it doesn't currently empty my mind to tweet about things, and I have to kind of train myself to do that because I got to try to engage things. Yeah. I have this bad habit where I'm not starving for content, but I also can't sit and watch a single show anymore. I've been in that boat for a long time. Yeah, I can relate to that. That, my was life. The, that was the critical role thing of like, there's so much to watch and I do want to watch it. Not going to watch it though. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've been recommended a TV show every seven days, but I've literally not watched a TV show in a long time. I can't tell you what the last TV show I watched was. I think the last but time watch, I watched a recommended watched TV show probably was a... <laughs> And that was years yeah. ago. That was the last time someone recommended a show to me, which was you, and I actually, actually watched it. Like, I, I watch a Twitch stream, like, every day, but you couldn't make me sit down and watch a TV show. Same. It's so Same. weird. I don't want to have to pay attention. I feel like if I watch a TV show, I actually have to watch it. And everyone, there's so many you... shows where people are like, "You will love it." I'm like, "I know." Yeah, I actively know I will enjoy it. It's just I'm not gonna yeah. do it. It's the same <laughs> reason of like whenever we, whenever you come around, it's like we inevitably watch a Ghibli movie, and it's it's basically, are we gonna watch Howl or are we gonna watch Spirited Away? <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna watch. We it. tried to watch a different movie last time, and it didn't go well. Yeah, we weren't vibing with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it wasn't that we weren't vibing with it. It's the recording of it that I had was bad. Yeah. So we were just like, let's just let's just watch Howl again. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Yeah. I have like a solid roster of comfort movies, and they're maybe the only movies I ever watch. <laughs> I did watch Glass Onion though. That's the first like I, I newish watched Glass movie. Onion as well, actually, I was yes, like, but that was because I went over to visit my family. And my mother was like, you said you were interested in watching this and we watched the first one together, so let's watch the second one together. And I went, yes. And because I said yes, I was tied into it because I was at my family. So it's like, cool, well, we're going to watch it now. And I was like, oh, I'm actually going to watch a film for once. And I did enjoy it. It was good. Yeah. I had a situation where I was stuck up here with Phoebe um, and I had to uh, just like make a fuss of her for like an hour. So... I think I liked the first <laughs> nice one, one more, but it was still yeah. good. It was, yeah, I see that. And, and also the product placement really threw me out of it for the first sort of like 10, 15 minutes. I did, I, it probably was throughout the whole of the film, but I feel like at the very beginning, I was very hyper aware of the fact of like, ha, huh, you're very definitely using an Apple iPad and you're very definitely, you know, using the speakers and it's like yeah to, to watch a film and hear them talk about things like youtube and twitch as as being relevant to the plot was like slightly jarring <laughs> yeah the, one of yeah. the characters is a streamer that is his job yes. so they talk about twitch a, and youtube yeah and i was like he's what? a 
problematic YouTuber, yeah. Yeah, it's like he was he was a, he was a, a Twitch streamer and he got banned from Twitch for being problematic and it was like, oh, I hooked him up with YouTube so that he could keep doing his stuff and I was like, what? This is part of the plot. It was yeah, it was. It's weird though because I agree the product placement felt you know a product placement in like movies like that is always a little jarring. It was jarring, yeah. But I felt like that kind of stuff. Whereas like he works on YouTube and Twitch, him, specifically for like, his character, I feel is appropriate. It's like I, I think it's also appropriate that like that one of the other members is running for a current US election. Like, yeah. they needed to feel like they were part of the culture we're all in right yeah, now. Yeah, it, it had to fit, because it was literally, it's not, you know, because, you know, films can be set whenever. But this was Serena it, Williams cameo. Yep. Yeah, yeah, the Serena Williams cameo, that really threw me off. Um, yep. Uh, but yeah, because a lot of films, obviously, that you can t- you can set them whenever, and a lot of films probably won't even disclose a date but this film was very definitely time stamping yeah. itself because hello it was set during the pandemic yeah and that it was, was like also a plot hey point. <laughs> here are these shitty people it's the middle of the pandemic it was like it was a, a way of showing like there was so many every shitty person made themselves very apparent during the pandemic and i feel like that movie did such a good job of being like the previous movie was about a shitty group of people that's like generational, right? It's like all in one family and all of them are bad. This is like the different varieties of rich people that yeah, are bad. I, was say, I, like, I like how both, both of the films have the theme of rich people really Suck. pieces of work. Oh my God. But I, I mean, I said it, I, I, com- I commented when we were watching it with, with, again within the first 10 minutes because it was pandemic and they were all getting together for this thing all the characters rock up and they've all got masks on and then the one girl is wearing a mask but it's yeah. a mesh but it's, ne- it's, it's a netting, net yeah. it's one of those net masks where it's like well it's not a mask and I literally said to mum and dad I pointed at the screen and I was like you immediately know what kind of person she is now, yeah 100% you? you got an immediate read on her character there's literally I would really really recommend there's one for Knives Out and there's one for Glass Onion on YouTube um, Ryan Johnson the director did a shot breakdown of that scene at the dock in Glass Onion and oh, how nice. every introduction is meant to be an introduction to the character. He's a really interesting guy to talk to. I did I'll link get it in that. Chat. Yeah, like the character but, I felt like again, it was I said it was good. It's literally just those things that are jarring jarring for me, but like, you know, oh, the, yeah. the, the writing was great. I you know, I, you know, there were bits there were things I, it made me laugh, you know. It's a murder mystery comedy kind. Of, it, it, oh, did yeah. make, it did make me laugh. I did laugh at things, you know. I, I, I literally like stared at the ceiling but was laughing at the fact that there was Among Us in it and I was just like, <laughs> oh my fucking god. <laughs> Again, like it's like the pandemic, like that time really happened yeah. when every single person on this earth was yeah. he was Among sat in he was sat in the bath on Zoom playing Among Us with people and I'm like, that is what the pandemic was like though. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is an accurate characterization of what it was like. Yeah. It's also just very funny to watch fucking yes. Daniel Craig play Among Us badly. <laughs> yeah, he was bad at it, which is also very funny. But yeah, so Glass Onion uh, was was very good. Yes, that's actually the last movie I watched, yeah. I think. Yeah, I don't know if I was getting on my parents' nerves because I really I realised as I was watching the film uh, of this revelation about me of like, um, have I feel like because it's, it's been a long time since I'd sat and watched a film, but as I was sitting and watching it, I was sitting there and I was become being aware of the thoughts I was having of like, I feel like I'm more aware and critical of the like I was I was noticing things like framing and lighting. Yes, and a hundred percent. I was like, I was watching it and like I, I and I was sitting there and I was like, oh, I love how they're framing this and and things like and and like at one point. Yes, at one point when he was in a room. Uh, just talking to just talking to another character. I'm trying to keep it make sure it's not spoiled. And I literally spoke up and I was like, "Look at the painting behind him. That's yeah. foresha- that's foreshadowing." I won't say what it was a painting of. I was like, "Look at the painting behind him. That's that's symbolism." <laughs> yeah, it's like I watch maybe a hundred percent less like curated like art like pieces of media. So like TV show and movies, not like streams. I watch like a hundred percent less probably. But the ones I watch, I pay very... I give it my whole 110% attention. Like, yes, I pay attention to things like cinematography and yeah, I, I try swear, and, like, really engage with it. I used to do that, but I became no, very aware... While I was watching Glass Onion, listener. I became aware 
that I was doing it. I was paying attention to how things were framed and the position of things and the lighting, and I was like, I don't know if this is to do with the fact that obviously I'm more because I'm more engaged with content because of being more, you know, a content creator now. Like, I'm actually instead of just being content to sit and watch something for enjoyment, part of my brain is now switched on to be like, analyze this so you can learn from it and use it in your own stuff, maybe. I, I mean, don't know. <laughs> to be that guy, um, that's what they taught me to do with books at uni. <laughs> like, that's basically how like my media consumption has evolved as I've gotten, like, I pay so much attention when I'm engaging with media now. Like, of how narrative works and how storytelling works and like i did to some extent before this but i'm just doing it much more consciously now and i yeah i'll do it with oh hell i'll do it with games like if i'm if i'm engaging with something for the first time i'm willing to really pick it apart mm -hmm. and that's part of the joy of it to me but I think that's also why I'm much more likely on any given day to go for something I've seen a hundred times than I am to go for something new because it's you don't, much yeah. bigger energy investment. Yeah. And again, it's that thing of like, well, because we've seen it before and it's not new, we already know it, so it kind of shuts off. Like, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that I ever, I've ever done done that with a Ghibli film. I've never sat there and analyzed. Like, I've always been like, oh, the background's beautiful and things like that, but... When I think I can't say like watching Spirit of Away that I'm actually like that, but watching Glass Onion, it was very much a oh the symbolism of this and the foreshadowing of this and the lighting of this is really yeah. nice and you know how they're silhouetted and things like that. It was also like I think as well with Glass Onion, by the time probably me and you watched it, it had already been kind of agreed upon that it was a good film. Yeah. Like we weren't really taking a gamble with a bad movie. <laughs> like we weren't like there was no world in which we were putting that energy in for nothing. Yeah. Right? Like we knew it was going to be good. Yeah. It's like when I, like, as you said about Ghibli movies, when you showed me Mononoke for the first time, I was thinking that about Mononoke at the time. Right. Like, I, you know, but I don't think that about how, really, because I've said it a hundred times and also I was very young when I watched it the first time. Um, but when I'm engaging for something first time straight up, then I am very, like, paying it a lot of attention and really picking at it because i can't help it i'll never forget mononoke yeah that was a good night i'm glad it's i'm so i was it was very much one of those things i knew i like, would like it i just needed yeah. to watch it it, it was one very of much one of those things of like i'm sharing something that i care a lot about with people i care a lot about i really hope they like it yeah you kind of had a win with that no matter what because it was a Ghibli movie so I was going to like it and it's about nature so I was going to like it also what you had told me and what I knew about the movie I already liked yeah <laughs> so like I, yeah I was there was no like, fail yeah, there was no fail condition yeah, like, like, I, I was nervous that you wouldn't like it but I was re reasonably confident of like I know you guys <laughs> yeah I would need to know if you're drawing this Xbox controller from memory or from reference. Memory. That's upsetting. <laughs> uh, I don't know really how to respond to that, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. I don't know how to, I don't... You don't, you're not meant to. Don't yeah, say I don't anything. Really, I don't really don't have speak. a response to that. I'm sorry. Don't speak. Don't say anything. <laughs> Oh, it's 11 o'clock, huh? Oh, wow. It sure is, huh? <laughs> it went from, like, 10 o'clock, they went very slowly for half an hour, and then it time-skipped half an hour. <laughs> I remember the exact moment when you both went, okay, Dust, we can sense your entire body tense of when you just did. <laughs> yep. I was like, when did you watch Mon No Game? But then I remembered Lad Night. <laughs> you remember Lad Night? <laughs> you remember it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe that any of the four of you yeah, remember I, I, Lads Yeah, Lads we, need to, we need to make this clear. The night that I decided that I wanted to introduce Curls and Dasa Princess Mononoke was when Neren was here and all of the guys went out for a Lad's Night of drinking. But, but you know, we were all like, well, we don't want to drink. And also, none of us are lads, so we're gonna, we're gonna stay <laughs> you at have home. Fun. We're gonna stay at home and watch Ghibli movies. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, none of us like drinking. None of us are lads. Let's go. Yep. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. 
Oh, I think that was also... Was that also the night where you fell on your ass playing VR? No, no that, that was, was the no, next day. No, that was... I don't think it was the next day. I don't remember who was... It was It was around that time. It was during near and was here. Kay and Das were not there. It might have been the day before. I'm trying to remember because I think... Did the book no, it must have been after Kay left. I'm trying to, yeah, because 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 the when I was in VR, it was the weekend because it was virality. Virality, yeah. So I'm trying to think what day the boys went for. Was it the Sunday the and they went out on like the Friday or the Saturday? Something it feels like, like something like that. Something like it would have been. So yeah, I feel like it was like the Sunday night because it it had that like energy of mania. Yeah. <laughs> oh hello Phoebe, Jesus Christ, you're gonna share me. Did you come to say good night? We have been blessed. Oh, Papi! Oh no, you want to go on your chair? She's Happy here. Me. Hello. Oh my God! Look how tired she oh. is. Oh, there she goes. She's tired. Oh, super sleepy immediately. I think that's probably because my nan just went to bed, so she's oh. like, I got kicked out of the warm room. Way. Right. Right. Yeah, you gotta go. It's eleven. Time to go. I did. I did. One in a bit. <laughs> I did two little bombs, which is fine by me. Alright. Because uh, <laughs> I haven't updated this, this won't update, but I mean... I mean, I'll flick over to here, but you guys have been looking at the schedule all evening, so I don't really need to yeah. reiterate, reiterate Tomorrow, uh, it. Tomorrow, 2pm, tomorrow yeah, night, tom yeah. Dragon Age with me. Tomorrow's the double day, I'm going to be streaming, you know, if I, there's like probably only going to be a 50% chance of if I am or am not streaming, <laughs> you know? If it's yeah. first, yeah. Just just open up Twitch, and there's a good chance that I will be live. So come hang out. Uh, tomorrow I'll probably finish off this, and I don't know, do something else. This is basically me me having a bit of a break from doing a lot of 3D work. So yeah. <laughs> yep. And then we're gonna play Dragon Age. Yes, last. Yeah. Right. Where we are? Oh, we're in Ozma. More yes. Ozma. More fine dwarven craft. Yes. Excellent. Right. I'm gonna go have a cup of tea and chill. And uh, yeah. yeah, enjoy the rest of your night. Uh, yeah, should we raid Dukes? Oh, uh, shall we raid Dukes? She never, she never streams at this time, so we might as well, right? We, we can, yeah. I don't, honestly, I don't know if we'll get much of a reaction, but sure. No, it's not really for that. <laughs> let me let me click in, click on Dukes. Make sure, check out. Make sure he's actually here. Yeah, because I. Uh... There you go. Oh, this... she's got. Oh, she's got the the Dracula VTuber. On. She's literally just started the game by the looks of it. It's literally on the loading screen. Okay, right. Oh, she's doing Dead Souls Return to Castlevania. This will be fun. Alright. <laughs> Let's heck and go. Go Let's show, show off the emotes. Because that's the easiest Long time way. Friends. That's the easiest way to get people interested. Show off the, show off your favorite emotes. And say Good hi. Alright, okay. we'll see you tomorrow. Alright, love yeah. you all. Bye. Right, bye bye.